Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And welcome to this webinar where you'll see how easy it is to add Windows 10 look, feel, and new components to your existing VCL application. This is gonna be fun. We're gonna take an old school VCL application and we're gonna start updating the user interface to the modern look and feel that users expect in a world of Windows 10, of smartphones, of tablets, and you'll see that you can leverage all of your existing code and start doing refinements and additions using the new VCL controls in Rad Studio 10 Seattle that work on Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. So let's get started. I'm David I, your presenter for today. I'm the chief evangelist here at Embarcadero Technologies. I love spending time with developers and, and doing programming with Delphi and C++ Builder. There's my email address. So if you have any questions after the webinar, send me an email. I love getting emails. Your ideas, your suggestions, your questions often spark blog posts and additional webinars and skill sprints that we can bring to the Embarcadero community. Here's my blog, the sip from the fire hose, my Twitter handle, and down here is the webinar blog post, short URL, embt.co slash vclwin10. Uh, you can use that short URL. I've got resources and links to information on the blog post. I'll put up the replay link when we're done with this webinar. I've also got a link to my slides on SlideShare so you can get all of that information and the sample source code for the projects once they're completed will be linked off of that blog post. Here's just a quick look at our agenda for today. I'm gonna to take a few minutes to talk about Rad Studio 10 Seattle also talk about what's new for VCL application developers in 10 Seattle. Then we'll take the Marine Adventures application, a sample that ships with the product, and we'll start modernizing it through different steps for the look and feel, new components that are available for VCL. We'll end it by summarizing what you've seen and what to do next. We also have special offers and promotions that are available, and then we'll finish it with live Q&A. So great to have you with me. Let's get started. Red Studio 10 Seattle was released last fall, and since then we've released a major update as well as hot fixes to allow you to build great applications for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and the Internet of Things. With the release of Red Studio 10 Seattle, we've added support for the new Windows 10 operating system release from Microsoft, as well as allowing you to add the Windows 10 user experience in your existing VCL applications that will run on Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. We've also added new custom Windows 10 styles that you can leverage in your existing VCL and FireMonkey applications. And you have full access to the universal Windows platform and WinRT services and components. Now, why use the new Windows 10 VCL controls and styles in your existing VCL applications? First, it will ensure that your application style matches the users of your application's Windows version. So if they're running on Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 10, your app will look good on each of those operating systems. Also, you can revitalize your existing applications with new looks and new experiences to excite your existing customers. You can also attract new customers who are buying new computers or have updated their computers who have Windows 10 as their standard operating system. Microsoft has announced that more than 200 million PCs are now running Windows 10. You can also create your own custom look and feel for your applications so that your customers will identify that the application is from you and has a great new modern look. Finally, you can use the capabilities in Red Studio 10 Seattle to provide a better user experience for your users that have new desktop and tablet hybrid type devices with gesture support, with high resolution displays, with touch screens and touch tablets. As part of 10 Seattle, we ship new Windows 10 VCL controls. These are visual controls, they're native VCL controls that map to common Windows 10 user interface elements. At the same time, these new VCL controls will also run on Windows 7 and Windows 8 operating system based computers. There's five new controls, the relative panel, the toggle switch, the search box, the split view, and the activity indicator. The relative panel is a new layout panel that lets you position and align child objects in relation to each other or the parent panel. For example, you can specify that some text will always be positioned to the left side of the panel. 
and that a button will always be placed below the text. Use Relative Panel when creating user interfaces that do not have a clear linear pattern as an alternative to using the T-Grid panel. The toggle switch mimics a physical switch that allows users to turn things on and off. The control has two states, on and off. You can modify or remove the caption labels of the toggle switch to match those states. In the past, you might have used a checkbox for this, but why not have a modern look using the toggle switch? Your users will love how easy it is to use and understand. The search box is an edit control that provides search capabilities similar to the FireMonkey T-Search box. And we'll see that in action in the Marine Adventure modified application. It allows you to also specify an icon indicator of what kind of search that's going on. The two choices right now are SBI text and SBI audio. The new split view control allows you to easily show and hide transient content. For example, you may want to use it as a top level navigation menu where the navigation content is hidden and slides in when needed. Sometimes we call this the hamburger menu with the hamburger icon in the upper left hand corner of the form. It's similar to the T-MultiView component that we have in the FireMonkey framework. It lets you have this slide in and slide out drawer style navigation in your Windows 10 apps. It also works in Windows 7 and Windows 8. And finally, the Activity Indicator VCL control. The Activity Indicator is that indeterminate progress ring indicator that you see in Windows 10. This indicator lets you choose between several types and allows you to modify many visual properties such as size, speed of animation, and indicator color. And now Serena DuPont will go through each of those five VCL controls with very quick demos using samples that ship with Rad Studio 10 Seattle. Now the relative panel is a new layout panel that provides a lot of flexibility for designing your user interfaces. It lets you position and align child objects in relation to each other or the parent panel. So for example, you can specify to have a text element always positioned to the left side of the panel and a button always below the text. Now, as you can see with this container control, the relative panel, we have parented a button to it, an edit to it, a shape, etc. And if I select the button, for example, here or the edit, you will see that there are properties for that, uh, for aligning that control with the panel. So, for example, there's a line left with panel, line right with panel, line top with panel property. And you can see in this demo here, we have set up a checkbox and we set up an on click event that allows you to programmatically align that control with the uh, panel. And you can, of course, choose from many different uh, alignment options. So now let's have a look at uh, this demo here. And you'll see when I run this demo that I can select from multiple styles. So for example, the Windows 10 Blue style, the Windows 10 Dark style, uh, the Windows 10 style. We also support for uh, older Windows styles, custom styles, etc. And you see here I can select align left with panel, align right with panel. I can select the button and set alignments for that as well. And I could go and select the uh, shape and I can select uh, alignments for that as well. Now in this release we also added a T-Toggle switch control for VCL applications and this control makes it really easy to add a switch to your VCL Windows applications. It can be fully styled using the new Windows 10 styles and also has support for custom styling through the premium styles for example that are part of the bonus pack. You can easily switch between two states on and off. You can set to show or hide the captions, and you can also provide your own custom captions as well. So you can see here there's a show state option that allows you to show and hide the state. You can set state captions, and of course you could also set all those values programmatically. Here you see an example of the uh, switch, and again it has support for different types of styles. So for example, I selected to Iceberg Classico here, or I can switch to our Windows 10 Blue style, and it has the traditional Windows 10 styling. You can show or hide the captions, the on-off captions. You could also select your own. So for example, you could set this to Manual or Auto. So you could customize the text that is shown next to your uh, switch control. I can select it to be left justified or right justified. If I select the window style here, 
I can also switch between some of the uh, color schemes, for example, easily change and adjust the fill. And of course, like I mentioned before, this has support for the Windows 10 styles as well as uh, other default styles that are included with uh, VCL applications that you can set via project options or premium style. The search box control is an edit control that has multiple customizable properties. For example, you can set a search indicator of a text icon or an audio icon. You can show an hint, a hint. You can uh, uh, set a variety of additional properties, and it is fully stylable as well. So I'm going to run this application here to show you what the search box control looks like. So, for example, I can type hello, and then I can hit search, and it will be shown here in my log and I could also select SBI audio and you would see the audio icon and I can hit search and of course this control is also fully stylable as you can see here as well. The T-Split View control allows you to easily show and hide application content and it's designed to be used as a navigational menu such as a slide and drawer and as you can see here in this demo and this is an example that's also included with Rat Studio 10 Seattle we have our split view control we have this hamburger icon here and this is a uh, icon that's commonly referred to as the hamburger icon, the three-line icon. That is a very common UI element that you might be familiar with on mobile to show and hide a slide and drawer menu. And so we have support now with the T-Split View Control to easily add a slide and drawer menu to your VCL applications and the T-Split View Control has a multitude of different options that you can choose from for that as well. So for example, we can select a closing style, whether the uh, menu itself, the slider menu will collapse or be shown as a compact menu. If it's collapsed, this entire menu here will be will slide out of view. If it's shown as a co uh, compacted menu, then you will see the icons still once the menu slides out of view, the icons will still be visible on the screen. We also have a display mode option here, of course, docked or overlaid. We have uh, the opening width that we can set, how wide this particular menu panel is, uh, once it's shown, whether we want to use animation, etc. And so, for example, here you can see if I select the, uh, uh, the split view, we can select to close it or not, depending on what option is set, of course. And then also, when it, once it's closed, then we adjust the button width and the button options. And this demo is really a good example to look at to get a better understanding of what T-Split View is all about. If you're familiar with the FireMonkey control T-MultiView, T-MultiView is a similar control. Uh, T-MultiView and FireMonkey was designed to be used across multiple different form factors and to provide a pop-over menu, a docked menu, a slide and drawer menu, etc. for multi-device applications. And T-Split View is quite similar to that for VCL Windows applications. So now let's run this application here on our Windows machine. And you can see here I'm running this on Windows 10. I can show and hide my uh, slide and drawer here, my split view. I can select the overlay display mode and you can see this will slide over the UI controls on the form. I can also select a compact closing style. So as I'm closing the actual split view, if I select a closing style of compact, you'll still see the icons here. Uh, if I select collapse, then the entire menu will be collapsed. You can also set the animation delay. So you can set the speed at which the uh, drawer slides in or out. Uh, animation step. And you can also adjust the placement of the split view control. And of course, you can also style this control. So here we have, for example, a, cu a custom style, Iceberg Classical. You can see we can create our own, uh, we can uh, create our own custom styles and also use the split view control with the custom style as well. And then, of course, adjust the UI elements accordingly so that if you're using custom icons, the color scheme, etc., works well with a particular style. And you can see here we have um, the dark style. We also have support, of course, for the Windows 10 blue style. And then we also have support for the Windows 10 light style. Now, the last control I want to show you is the T activity indicator control. And this is an indeterminate progress ring indicator. And it lets you choose between many different properties. It's fully stylable, etc. So you can drop the T activity indicator control onto your form. You can select to animate this control. You can adjust the indicator color. You can select the indicator size. You can select the indicator type, etc. So now let's have a look at what uh, the indicator looks like at runtime. So first we're going to check off to animate this control. We have a rotating sector, we have a rotating ring, 
and we have the momentum dots. And these momentum dots are the indeterminate ring uh, indicator style dots that you are probably familiar with and have seen on Windows 8 and Windows 10. And then we can adjust the indicator size as well. We can select white or black. Uh, and it's fully supported with both default styles and also custom styles. We've also added VCL styles for the common dialogues that come with Windows, and those tie into the VCL styles that you can add into your applications. So for the open text file dialog, the open dialog, the print dialog, the page setup dialog, printer setup dialog, and so on, all of these will take on the same VCL styles across all the versions of Windows that we support, which will allow you to customize your Windows UI for these common dialogues so they'll match styles that you use in your applications. Let's take a look at a quick demo on VCL styles for common dialogues by Al Manorino. Let's look at VCL styles for common dialogues. In Rad Studio 10 Seattle, you can now customize your Windows UI using VCL styles with support for common dialogue styling. So VCL styles has been extended to support common dialogues. And this gives you a very cohesive color scheme across all of the dialogues in your app. This VCL app shows the new VCL styles for common dialogues. On this app, we added the 10 common dialogue components for color, font, find, search, open, open picture, open text file, print, page setup, and printer setup. The app also has a styles combo box that lets you select at runtime what VCL style to apply to the application. On the apps form create event, we load all of the available VCL styles into the combo box. At runtime, when the user selects one of the VCL styles from the combo box, we call T Style Manager Set Style and we load the selected VCL style. Let's run the app and we see that the default style is set to Windows 10 Lite. Let's look at the VCL styles for these common dialogues. So if I click on uh, T Color Dialog, we can define new colors, select a new color, and add it to our custom styles and say OK. So that works fine. If I click on uh, T Font Dialog, we can change fonts and font styles and sizes and do special effects. That all works fine also. And all the other dialogues will have the same Windows 10 light style like we just saw. Let's change the style to Windows 10 Blue. So now we see the main menu is in Windows 10 Blue. And if I use the T Open dialog, we now see that its dialog also has the Windows 10 Blue style. So that's cool. And if I select any file and say right click to delete, then we also see that even the delete confirmation dialog gets the same style. So that's also very cool. Brad Studio 10 Seattle also provides support for high res monitors and for multi monitors in your applications. Some of you have 4K monitors and you can use the project options setting to support these 4K monitors. You can also use per monitor DPI in your VCL apps for Windows 8.1 and Windows 10. We also have added modern looking select directory dialog for your VCL applications, it's also used in the IDE. Let's go over to the IDE and take a look at some of these settings. So if we create a new VCL application, we can go into the Project Options menu, down to the Application option, and you'll see that by default we've enabled High DPI for your VCL applications. There's nothing else you need to do in your application. All of the work for High DPI support is under the covers and provided for you. Also, you can go under the Appearance settings for application, and you can choose from several new styles. Our default style is still Windows, but we now have the Windows 10 look, a Windows 10 blue, and Windows 10 dark. You can select these and add them to your choices of styles, and you can choose which default style you want, for example, Windows dark. And as I mentioned, the IDE and your VCL applications can take advantage of the new select directory dialog and look and feel. So if we put an open dialog down in our VCL application and put a button down, say open dialog one, and we'll just call execute, hit run. And now we have this dialog with the quick access 
the icons and the look that's available in Windows 10. If we run this same VCL application on Windows 7, Windows 8, it'll use the open dialog look and feel for those two operating systems as well. Now that's just an overview of what's new with Windows 10 look and feel for your VCL applications, your new VCL controls, and so on. Let's move now into the Marine Adventures application. This is an example of a master detail application with customers, orders, parts, inventory items, and so on. This has been around for a while. It uses Interbase database that ships with the product. It uses the Interbase Express or IBX data access components. This application has an older UI with a large button bar for the functionality, uh, a menu. Uh, it's been updated when we added styles for VCL, so there's a style selection choice, and we'll see that in action. All of the forms are either pop-up forms, either modal or modeless. There are edit forms, and it's really not designed for modern look or for a touch tablet kind of use. So let's take a look at the Marine Adventures application in action, just so we can see its current state with the product. And then we'll go through and do a couple of refinements using some of the new capabilities in Rad Studio 10 Seattle. And here we are in the IDE with the Marine Adventures order entry application. We've got a Delphi version and a C++ version as well. So here you'll see it's got a panel with some buttons the big buttons uh, to open up a new order, to browse customers and orders, get the parts and inventory, uh, close the application. It even has the capability to hook into the Windows help system. It's got uh, Windows menus for new order or use the button bar. Uh, under the view menu, you can bring up the orders and customers, uh, get to the parts and inventory. When we added styles for VCL, this new menu was added for styles, and then we'll see how that gets populated with the styles that were added for the application before it was built and deployed. Let's go and look at the form create event handler. And here, what it does is it first finds the last button, which is the close button in the panel, and it sets the client width of the control panel or button bar to that width and sets the height. And then it aligns the main panel to the client area of the application. And that way it resizes uh, this button bar to be just enough space for the buttons themselves. And it positions its left and top to the upper left-hand corner of the display screen. Then we iterate through the style manager, getting the style names that are part of the application. And here it adds to that styles menu, uh, the different styles that are associated, and it adds an event handler for each one of them, which is the style click that will set the style. And then if the active style that was set in the project options equals a specific style, then it sets the checkbox for that item in the menu. Same thing in C++, if we go over to the main application, and we go down and look at the form create. Again, we set the client width and height uh, in, the, uh, in the application's UI, which is over here, same UI, just the C++ version. Then we iterate through, again, the style manager style names, get the style, create a menu item under the style menu, set the style name as the caption of that menu item, set the event handler for on click of the style menu item, and then put a checkbox if that default style is the one that we find. And then we add the item to the style menu, building up the styles. And then as we do the style click, remember we set the event handler for the menu items here, it will go through and select the text name of the style, and then it'll set the style use into the style manager of that style name to change the look of the user interface. And then check in the menu item for the style that we selected and turn off all the other checks on the menu items. So let's run the application and take a look. Uh, here's that Marine Adventures. Notice it's tightened up the buttons on the panel. Here's this view menu which allows us to bring up the orders, the parts and inventory and so on. And now we have this styles menu with just the Windows style in it, the default style. Let's go back under project options, application appearance, and let's enable the Windows 10, Windows 10 blue, 
and Windows 10 Dark Styles. And let's just choose the Windows 10 Dark Style as our default style. And then we'll run the application again. And now we've got the Dark Style for our main form. And we've got the other styles associated. So Windows Dark has a checkbox. We could change it to Windows Blue, the Windows 10 look, and go back to our original older look Windows. Go back to Dark. Let's bring up the Orders by Customer form. And we can see as we check, because of the master detail relationship, for each customer we have the orders of products they purchased and the amount they've paid and amount they might have due. We can go and uh, define a query looking for customers with last invoice dates in a certain date range. We can even edit uh, information about the customer. And then we're done, close the application. Same thing, go to the parts and see the parts and uh, an inventory that we have on hand. We can see if there's any back orders. So we've got some that are on ordered and then uh, edit and close as well. Here's a printer setup. So we've got the, the look and feel of a printer setup application, again, using the dark style. And we can go and print reports. If we go and look at the data module, just so we can orient ourselves to everything that's going on, uh, here's the database component. Uh, it's using the MAST SQL GDB file. We've got a transaction component and then a, a whole set of table operations, including the master detail relationships, customer queries, last item queries, parts query, and so on. So if we want to search for a specific customer or get uh, orders by date from that query that you saw with that little search box coming up, or we can filter out and look for just orders for a customer in a date range. Just again, an old style uh, Delphi and C++ Builder application. Now that we've taken a look at the Marine Adventures application that exists today, let's go and use some of the new capabilities in 10 Seattle to modernize the look and feel and the functionality of the Marine Adventures app. We're going to do this in a couple of steps. In step one, we're going to add new Windows 10 style choices using the project options and make sure that the code still works to let you select from the different styles. We're going to add a T toggle switch to connect to the database. We're going to use the T activity indicator to show that the database is open and ready for operations. And we're going to add a T search box component for searching the orders date range inside of the customer and orders form. Uh, after that, we're going to replace that old school looking button bar with the new T split view component. We're going to use the new T relative panel component for the forms home page and show how you set up relationships between the different components that are contained in the relative panel. And we're going to add a gesture manager for the main form. We're going to use left and right gestures to open and close the split view. We'll also have the hamburger icon for opening and closing the split view window. Now we won't be able to get to every kind of enhancement that you might want to do on this existing VCL application. So I'll leave that for additional work to come in the future where we could add, for example, uh, the parts inventory item to, as a split view item, uh, report printing split view item, replace the, all these pop-up forms and modal forms uh, with new user interface elements. And we could add help file integration inside of the application. In all of these cases, the application that results will work on Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. Now there are new Windows 10 specific capabilities that you can add that are included in Rad Studio 10 Seattle. We won't do those in this webinar, but next Wednesday we'll cover more of the new Windows 10 specific capabilities you can choose to add to your VCL applications. So here we are in the IDE. And let's open up the first refinement of a VCL application. Here we have the same button bar style that you saw in the original application. We've got the new orders button, browse button, parts button. We've got the menus, the styles menu, and so on. Here we've added a, a new part to the button bar. This is using the T relative panel. And I have two components on it. One is a toggle switch. And the other one is the activity indicator. And on the relative panel, we end up with a collection of controls. So if we look over in the structure window, you'll see that the relative panel is controlling the toggle switch and the activity indicator in the control collection. 
And then we can use the structure window to select each of those two components. The toggle switch has uh, a name and we can set additional properties. For example, we could set the state captions. So here it's just off and on. We might want to change this to a database on and database closed, for example, something like that. So you can specify the caption based on the state. You can also set the state using the toggle switch to off or on. And you can test the state to see if it's on or off. In the activity indicator, we can specify the frame delay for the activity indicator. We can specify uh, that its animate property is true or false, so it animates. And then we can also look at the indicator color, uh, black or white. We can look at the indicator size. Your choices are small, medium, large, and extra large. And again, you can specify other properties as well. We'll leave all the default properties the way they are. Now, the other part of the relative panel adds capabilities to the controlled components. So for example, I could go down further and I have the choices inside of the relative panel to align uh, parts of each of the controls. So for example, I've set true to align the horizontal center with the panel. So that will allow this toggle switch to always be in the center of whatever the size of the relative panel is. I've also said align top with panel for that toggle switch, which means it'll always be on the top part of the relative panel, regardless of the size of the relative panel. You also have other options where you can align uh, different parts of the control with another control. So if I wanted to align the bottom of the toggle switch with the activity indicator, I could choose that. So you can align relative to the panel and you can align relative to other controls in the panel. You can also specify that, that a component is below, uh, left of, right of another component. You have all the choices for how components that are in the control collection are related to each other as well as to the panel. Uh, for this toggle switch, I've got an event handler on click and it's I called a method is on, or we could have checked the state of the toggle switch. But in this case, I'll use the is on method. It'll return true or false. So if the toggle switch is on, then I'm going to open up the database, start a transaction for any database operations that'll take place in the application. I'm gonna set the activity indicator color to white. I'll set the animate to true, and I'll enable all the other buttons in the UI that are related to the fact that the database is open or closed. If the toggle switch is off, I'll commit any active transactions that are available. I'll close the database. I'll set the animate property of the activity indicator to false because now the database is not connected. And I'll disable all the UI buttons that are related to the database being closed or open. And the rest of the user interface and the rest of the code is the same as the Marine Adventure, the original operations, bringing up the forms and so on. On the form create, we're going to open up and load the different styles that are associated with the application appearance. So in our project, project options, application appearance, I've set uh, Windows 10, Windows 10 Blue, Windows 10 Dark, and the default style as Windows. Let's go and change that uh, to Windows Blue, for example, as a default. Now, another part of the user interface is on the uh, Browse Customers and Orders. Uh, there's this button here called Define Query as a speed button. And on click, we can bring up the code that says, bring up this query customer dialog uh, so that we can query uh, invoices that are associated with the customer. So if we go to the query customer form, you'll see that now I'm using the T search box component and I've left the default search icon there because that's what we're going to do. We're going to search for some text, which is the invoice date from and to. So if we go down to the search indicator, I've left that SBI text 
And also in the search box component, if you want to, you can specify an on invoke search event handler. And in this case, I'm just going to use the same event handler that I would use if I click the OK button. So those are the refinements that we've made to parts of the user interface. Again, it's still the old school style uh, button bar, but a few of the new components, relative panel, toggle switch, activity indicator. So let's go and run this example. Now we've got that blue Windows 10 style. Again, we can go and see all the different ones, dark, Windows 10, go back to the old school Windows. Uh, let's leave it on blue for now. Let's go and turn it on. Now that's connected the database, so all the other elements of the user interface and the button bars and also the menu items are available. And we've got the animate indicator that just reminds us that we're connected to the database. We can go and browse the orders by customer. So again, the master detail relationship shows us customer list and orders by that customer. We can go to the define query and maybe choose some different dates. For example, let's go and, uh, and just go from 2006 to 2012. We've also got this little button that brings up the calendar so we can choose a date. And then we can either click the OK button or click the search button to close that search box and then activate the query and it said there's no invoices inside of that date. So let's go back and, uh, and change it again to something larger, activate the query. And now we see some of the last invoices associated with the existing customers that are in that date range. Disconnect the database and come back and we're done. So that's the first step, adding a few of the new VCL controls. Again, this application will run on Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. Okay, the next refinement is we're going to change dramatically the look and feel of the navigation inside of the Marine Adventures application, but we're going to leave all the edit forms and browsing forms and so on the same. Let's now bring up the Master Detail Marine Adventures application using the new split view component for the user interface design. So here we are, we've got a, a form. We've got an action manager, a gesture manager, because remember I, I said I wanted to also take advantage of these new touch style systems, both desktops and tablets that are running Windows. We've got an image list here, and the image list uh, has the hamburger icon that we're going to use for opening and closing the split view. We've got a little home icon, so we can go back to our home main page. We've got a little uh, display of information here that I'm using for the customers and orders. We've got uh, the a, a power meter, and we've got another window that is new in this application. I want to keep track of the log of the operations that the users of the application are taking advantage of. So I just have kind of an icon here that shows a linear list of items uh, to denote the idea of, of, a, of an event log. Now, so far I've, I've put um, a category set of buttons here. So we've got our category buttons and inside of the category buttons, we've got some items, the home button, the customers in order button and the event log. And each of these is associated with an image. Here's the image index for that uh, image list. So home will take me to my home window that we see on the form. Little customers and orders icon will show me the customers and orders associated with transactions that are in our database. And this event log window, which will give us this in this list box, the operations that are taking place under the covers. The second part here is the split view itself. So that's here called the T-split view. And the T-split view allows us to contain all of these buttons associated with them. You have several options and properties on the split view. You could, there's an animation delay as the split view opens and closes like a drawer opening or closing. You can set that uh, to whatever value the default is 15. The animation step property lets you set the number of pixels 
that moves as the animation opens and closes. We can set the width of the split view. So here the opened width is set to 200 pixels. So it looks like uh, 20 pixels at a time over that time frame as it opens and closes. You can also just open it and close it immediately. That's your choice. There's a property for that, whether you want to use animation or not. I've got it turned off. You also can set the placement of the split view. I've got it coming in from the left. You could have it coming in from the right and going away. Is it opened by default or is it closed? So we can see that at design time, open, close. And then we can turn that on and off or call a method open and close. Uh, over in the user interface of the home page, we've aligned that to the client area and I'm using a relative panel. And on the relative panel, I have uh, three components. I have a toggle switch, again, for is the database open or closed? And this time on the toggle switch, I've changed the state captions uh, string database closed when the caption is off and when it's on uh, database open. So right now it's off by default. So database closed shows up. We've got a combo box and this is just gonna contain all of the styles that we find as part of the application. And I've got this list box that is gonna hold all the different events that take place sort of as a log for the user of the things that they did uh, as part of uh, their operations during the day. We've got in the relative panel as before. In this case, the control collection has the log, has the panel, and has the combo box uh, as well. And we can go for each of these controls and set, for example, the we want the combo box to be aligned horizontal center with the panel. So I always want this combo box to be aligned to the relative panel and always be horizontally centered. I also said I wanted this combo box to be below the panel that is containing the toggle switch. And then for the list box, I've got it aligned horizontal center with the relative panel. So it always stays in the middle, no matter what size the relative panel is. And again, you saw it stayed centered. All, in fact, all of these controls stayed centered, whether the split view was open or closed. And then I also wanted to make sure that it was always below the combo box. So I set the below property to CBX VCL styles. A couple other alignments, a horizontal center within the relative panel and vertical center within the panel. I wanted it vertically or oriented inside of the contained relative panel. A couple other notes on our split view is we can have a caption and an icon associated with each of the category menu items that we're using. And on the split view, not only can you close it, but you can also set whether you want to have a compact view or not. And you can set the compact width. In my case, I'm going to have the split view always be open with the label and the icon. On the split view, we could also choose to have the close style either be to collapse all the way or only collapse down to a compact form. I like it to appear and disappear. Uh, if you set the compact style, then only the image list icons will appear. The captions will just dis disappear. So that's a case where if you want to leave your split view as a navigation tool there all the time, you can set the close style to be compact. But in my case, I just want it to close and be done with. Now notice up on the top, we've got a panel and a label on the panel. And we've also got the little hamburger icon or the three line icon uh, kind of looks like a Big Mac with two patties of beef in the middle. So that's the shorthand form that most people refer to it as the hamburger icon. And we've got an on click of the image click. And it just says if the split view is open, then close it. If the split view is not open, then open it. So we can use that hamburger icon to bring the menu back at any time. The other thing I've done in the gesture manager associated with the form is that I associated the gesture manager. And for the standard gestures, I've got the left and right gesture to execute two different actions, the split view action left 
and the split view action right. So if I do a gesture left, I want to close that split view. If I gesture right, I want to open the split view. So if we go to the action list, we've got several actions associated. The first three are associated with each of these split view category menu buttons. And we'll execute those, bring up the home page, uh, bring up the customers and orders form, uh, bring up the log, and so on. We've got the action left and action right. So if we go and look at the event handler, it says action gesture left. All we want to do is call split view close. If we do a right gesture, split view open. So we can do gestures with a touch screen or with the mouse uh, anywhere on the form. So let's run this application and see how the split view user interface behaves. So here I've got the Windows 10 blue. Again, I can choose dark, uh, Windows 10, a uh, different style here. I stuck in Iceberg Classico. That's pretty cool. We've got our split view buttons here. We've got the hamburger icon. So when we click on it, we're going to show the split view or not show the split view. And again, notice these controls that are part of the relative panel are in relationship to each other, one below the other, below the other, all centered. So we can open up the database. Here's the log showing up. We now have the database open. If we go here, we've got uh, go to the home, go to the customers and orders, and we can go and step through the different customers and orders. We could even edit the specific information about the customers and say, okay, or cancel and close. We could bring up the event log, which brings us back here to the home page, and so on. And then as we add more operations like printing reports, getting the parts and inventory information and so on, we could add more of these category menu items and associate images with them uh, in our user interface. As you notice, we started with the sort of old school, big button bar, pull down menus and all, but in the modern world of tablets, mobile apps, and so on, we use these kinds of operations. For example, the, the hamburger icon, the multi-view on FireMonkey on iOS, Android, we get that now in our VCL applications. And again, the great thing is all of this works on Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. Two steps along the way in modernizing our application. Of course, there's many more steps to be done, adding relative panels, for example, to some of the forms that are associated with orders and inventory and parts, adding some different styles that you might want for your application. So we've done the first two steps and there's many enhancements to come. We don't have all the time in this webinar to show additional refinements, but we'll keep working on these applications over the coming weeks. And I'll keep updating the zip file in Code Central so that you can take a look at additional capabilities that I put into the modern new user interface, new experience for users for the Marine Adventures application. So just to summarize, Rad Studio 10 Seattle, Delphi 10 Seattle, C++ Builder 10 Seattle are ready for you to move your VCL applications to the modern user interface user experience that application users expect in a Windows 10 world, in a multi-device world, uh, both the mobile and tablet experience and the desktop experience. Rad Studio 10 Seattle comes in the Professional, Enterprise, Ultimate, and Architect editions. Rad Studio includes C++ Builder, Delphi, HTML5 Builder, and Interbase XE7, and a whole bunch of third-party controls as well. You can also purchase Delphi separately and C++ Builder separately in all of those different uh, editions. Just want to mention a few special offers. Here's a slide that has it. I'm going to let Jim McKeith tell you a little bit about the special offers that we have now through the end of February, the buy one, get one free, and the bonuses that come when you purchase 10 Seattle. Give me a brief moment to tell you about this limited time special offer. All 10 Seattle registered users get the bonus pack, which includes the new Object Pascal Handbook by Marco Cantu. This essential language reference is a modern language guide that includes new features of the language and the core runtime library, a must have for any Delphi developer. Also get the Binder Converter Basic. It handles the heavy lifting when converting existing VCL applications into FireMonkey applications, so you can start taking advantage of multi-device development right away. And the Premium Style Pack. 
includes premium styles for VCL and FireMonkey to make your application look great on every platform. For more information on these special offers or to find out what the current offers are, please visit www.embarcadero.com slash rad offer. And one more special offer we have only for the month of February is if you buy one tool, you get another tool for free. And it's a tool of equal or lesser price. So the website says value, but sometimes you feel like you're getting better value on the free tool. It feels like sometimes, at least for me. So if you buy Rad Studio, Delphi, or C++ Builder 10 Seattle, either new user or upgrade, professional enterprise, ultimate architect, you can get any of those tools you see there. For example, Kanopka Signature VCL Controls, Code Site Studio 5, Interbase, or a number of the other database tools. Full details and instructions are available at the RAD offer page you see down there at the bottom. So check that out. If you don't have 10 Seattle yet, this is a great time to upgrade to 10 Seattle and take advantage of the special offer. As I mentioned a couple of times, I have a follow-on webinar that's going to take place next Wednesday, February 24th. It's part of the Move Forward to Windows 10, Move Forward to RAD Studio 10 Seattle that we're doing. I'm going to add additional capabilities that are Windows 10 specific, local notifications, application sharing contracts, and there's 40 new WinRT API units that you can leverage the functionality of WinRT in your existing VCL applications. But I want to mention that using these new capabilities means that your application will only work on Windows 10. Of course, you can use if defs, to conditionally compile code in and out of your VCL applications if you need to have the app work in Windows 7, 8, and 10, or you can start building Windows 10 specific applications. Again, same times for the webinar, 6 a.m., 11 a.m., and 5 p.m. And the registration links are also on my blog post. So now it's time to take your questions. And again, down at the bottom is the short URL for my blog post that has all the links to the slides, the links to other resources available, and I will get the projects up on Code Central in a zip file as soon as possible in the next few days. So let's have your questions. If you do have any questions, go ahead and put them in the question panel in the GoToWebinar software, and we'll get them answered for you. So there's a few questions here about the differences between HTML5 GUIs, FireMonkey, and VCL. So VCL is the framework that's designed for Windows. It's the one that's been available on Delphi since Delphi came out, always with new additions and new features and such, as a lot of stuff David I was showing today uh, for Windows 10. FireMonkey is the new cross-platform framework that is driven by the uh, GPU based on DirectX and OpenGL, uh, often abbreviated as FMX for FireMonkey, VCL's Visual Component Library. And then HTML5 uh, Builder has its own set of GUI components. Now, there are some third-party frameworks out there that let you turn VCL and FireMonkey applications into web applications using HTML5 and JavaScript and uh, all sorts of neat uh, web technologies. <laughs> There's not one that would actually draw your form in the browser window and stuff. It's pretty cool stuff out there. Um, I've heard a lot of people really love those. I can't remember the names of the different ones, but there's quite a few out there if you are interested in something like that. So those are the three different technologies. And because of some of the technologies allow you to blend that, it makes it sometimes a little hard to uh, distinguish between them. Uh, so George is saying he needs to design a user interface with multiple components inside it and then to have the components resize according to resizing according to the main forms changes. So th there is a um, component, a T-scaled layout on FireMonkey. And if you nest the T-scaled layout, and I can't remember exactly the things you set for it, but you essentially nest it as another code layout and you set the scaled layouts property to proportional and then you put everything else inside of it, um, then it will expand and contract as the main form expands and contracts. If you watch the skill sprint we did a few weeks back on FireMonkey layouts, it walks you through that particular scenario specifically. Because like you, George, I always was writing code in the past to do exactly that. And so t scaled layout does a beautiful job with that. Uh, if you're doing it on Windows... The scaled layout will um, do that automatically for you, but you can actually just use a normal layout in FireMonkey and then set the and the scaling uh, accordingly. Um, so you can actually kind of have a, always have a zoom depending on how good your eyesight is and leave it up to the user to define. Oh, just, just, just the scale property on the layout itself, that's true. Yeah. 
There is one here. Let's see. Uh, I have a large project which has been updated until Delphi XC8, XC6. It would like to take next step to Seattle. How can I do this without having to upgrade all the third-party components? So if you do have source code to your third-party components, I most of them should be able to move fairly easily from XC6 to XC8. And... Um, Oh, it's saying you don't have source code for all of them. So, if yeah, if you don't have source code, they're not binary compatible between XE um, six and XE X or I'm not XE eight ten Seattle. There's not, they're not binary compatible in there. So you would either need to get the source code for the ones you don't have source code for, or get the latest version. And then the ones that you have source code for, frequently if you go in there, there's a there are checks to say if it's version XC5, do this. If it's version XC6, do this. And then what happens is it doesn't know what version 10 Seattle is, and so which is the, the uh, so it doesn't know how to evaluate 10 Seattle, so it doesn't run on 10 Seattle. So if you can go in there and find those version checks and update them to recognize 10 Seattle as being the latest version, frequently that will get you probably 90% of the way of getting your code working. And after that, you usually just see if there's compile errors and any runtime errors um, and build maybe some unit tests around the components to make sure they work. But, yeah, if you don't have source code for them, then there's not a lot you can do to move forward without either getting it updated or getting source code for it. Now, also, one of the things that um, obviously has been worked on in the last few releases of Rav Studio is the new GetIt um, package manager. So using other tools in the IDE, you can go to Get It and um, there's a lot of the popular third-party components are in there now. So the Jedi components are in there. There's, um, and uh, there's a few encryption ones. There's, um, there's, a, there's a whole host in there, basically. Um, just literally go in there, pick the ones you want, tell it to install, and it will download the latest version, compile it on your IDE, and it's installed, ready to go. Um, so... Uh, it is a lot easier to move up than it ever has been before, um, thanks to Get It. So if you're worried, just download the trial, give it a go, and you'll see. Um, it's pretty easy to move a lot of the, the popular open source components that have been uh, moved into Get It. Um, down. And if there are ones, open source libraries or free libraries out there that you would like to see and get it, please let us know, and we'll do our best to get those added. We've uh, always on the lookout to add new uh, good candidates in there, things that are popular, maintained, and uh, freely available. So questions here about Windows 10 phone, universal apps, and Continuum. So right now, Windows 10 on x86 devices is supported. So, for example, I have a Windows 10 tablet that runs an Atom processor, and that works just fine. Uh, I'm not sure if they have Windows 10 phones use Atom processors or not. I haven't tried that. Uh, you might get some traction there. The uh, Windows 10 ARM, though, is not yet supported. Now, um, you can also target, though, uh, Microsoft is going to re release a bridge for that, and then they change their mind. So, unfortunately. Uh, and then the question is about universal apps and continuum. So, Microsoft kind of overloads the definition of a universal app if because uh, 10 Seattle apps can take advantage of Windows runtime and uh, things like notifications, that actually qualifies it as a universal app. Now, usually people say universal app, they mean, can I put it in the app store and distribute it with the automatic updates and stuff like that? And that's actually something, if you check out the roadmap, which I put a link in the chat window there for that, is something that's going to be supported with the Centennial update that Microsoft has coming for Windows 10. So once Centennial comes out, then we'll be able to uh, easily build apps that can be distributed to Windows Store with automatic updates, automatic install, automatic install, and all the other stuff that people usually associate with Universal. And again, like I said, Universal is kind of overloaded, so it means different things to different people, unfortunately. So Ken's asking, says, under future enhancements after step two, uh, what were they replacing modal forms with? So it said in the slide, replacing modal forms and pop-up forms, but it didn't say what with. Uh, there's lots of things you could do with that. And I, some of them, something I was thinking is you could do, replace modal forms and pop-up forms with, for example, have them uh, the just as uh, 
instead of a modal form, you could have it as a separate tab, for example, or a separate frame. Sorry, that was my eight o'clock alarm my phone set for. <laughs> Um, so it, instead of actually having a modal form, you could use a frame and embed that frame in, like, for example, a tab sheet. So you can switch to a different tab. And so this way, instead of having different forms that get layered on top of each other, you just move the user between tabs, and you can hide the tabs and then create a single form that they just move between different states on that form with. So some questions here about cold code forming. Cold, I'm sorry, code folding. Folding. Yes, what you can do with the, there's a right click and you can fold sections of code. And then also, as you point out, Stephen, there's the region that you can use, region compiler directive that you can use to mark code. Code, code is foldable. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a IDE directive, really. Um, yeah, it is. The dollar, dollar region. And then uh, in quotes, you can put a name. Um, and that way you can kind of fold up sections of code uh, and call it. Call it. Yeah, this code does something. Um, this code some, does something else. Uh, whatever um, to make it easier to scan down for the block that you're particularly looking for. Um, so yeah, now that's been around for quite some time. I'm not quite sure when it originally appeared, which is one of the, the other questions. So uh, if anybody knows, then uh, feel free to to send the message in. But um, yeah, it's been around for a while. It's something I actually quite I use quite often. Specifically, if I've got multiple classes, um, I can then do a, a region for each class um, in the implementation uh, section, uh, which makes it quite easy to kind of fold up what I'm not using at the time. Excellent, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's useful to do. Although, I, I heard once that if you are folding code in your unit, then that means your unit's doing too many things. <laughs> you should refactor it to yeah. be less code in that unit. <laughs> well, I don't know. If you've got, like, a class that's got, say, half dozen properties on it, um, you're going to end up with quite a few things in there. So um, it's yeah, it's certainly useful. Specifically, I, I find in it, particularly in a method, um, if I've got a whole load of kind of setup code, I can put a region in there saying this is setup code. Uh, then I can collapse it in and out because it's stuff that I might not be using all the time, but it's and save me scrolling through it constantly. Um, it's quite useful, uh, especially on doing things like unit tests and, and, and that kind of side of things. It's always quite useful just to be able to um, put a marker down and say, hey, this is what this bit is, and then you can then get past that quite quickly, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so there's a question here about Windows XP support, because some people still have customers that are not using or are still on XP. So XP is not officially supported, and so there's some new features we have that are like, for example, Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 specific, like notifications and such and such. Actually, notifications are Windows 10 specific. Number of Windows 10 specific features and then other features are Windows 8 and newer specific. Those won't work on XP, no way, because they're calling A8 and Windows 10 A A A APIs. Uh, beyond that, we test everything that's not specific to Windows 10 on Windows uh, 7 and Windows 8 as well, but we don't test on XP. But a few versions ago, Delphi worked with XP, C++ worked with XP. Now, we're not testing against XP anymore, but things should still work on Windows XP. Uh, prior to XP, I don't know that you'd have, you may still have luck on earlier versions, but you're, the further back you go, the more you're pushing your luck. But yeah, the styles, the styles actually were they should work on Windows XP. I'm not sure when they were introduced and what versions they should work on. But again, like I said, Windows XP is not officially supported. But if you are careful, uh, usually you can uh, support it as well. So, answers. So, question about Windows 10 Phone that we the bridge. Microsoft had a bridge announced that they were going to support, and we were actually evaluating that and looking at what we could do to use that Windows 10 bridge to uh, reach the Windows phone, but the Microsoft uh, uh, put it on hold indefinitely. Um, so you'd have to talk to Microsoft about that, whether they're going to re resurrect that bridge or not. Mm -hmm. I think we are got through the questions here. If I missed any questions or if you do still have other questions we haven't answered, please go ahead and put them in the question panel here. 
Uh, even if you got to repeat it, since we missed it, I apologize for that. There's a few of to sift through here, and we'll get them answered for you really quick. And if you're not running Windows 10 yet, um, I, I, I like Windows 10, but one thing about Windows 10 is Microsoft has announced that it's the last release of Windows, the last major release of Windows. And so what they're doing is they're actually roll out new features on a continuous basis, even now since it's only been released for a little while, they're still have made changes. And so sometimes I'll go into a screen and I'm like, oh, this setting screen is completely different than it was yesterday because they've updated it. So it's a little annoying that, that things sometimes change, but at the same time it means that they are rolling out not only just fixes, but updates and enhancements as time goes by, just to let this in. So uh, Windows Centennial, which is the bridge that will allow us to run, uh, to make native apps uh, run in the App Store, is just going to be rolled out someday, and uh, it'll just be part of Windows 10. And so that's exciting, something to look forward to. Okay, I think we've gotten through all the questions here. Thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully you'll be back next week for the next uh, webinar. Also, remind you that we do have our skill spreads going on Tuesdays and Thursdays, where we um, have short, shorter webinars on uh, more fo very focused topics. So uh, tomorrow we're going to have uh, effective if defs for cross-platform development with C++. Thursdays are C++. Then Tuesday we have the effective use of the FireMonkey T image list on Tuesdays for Delphi, and then Thursday would be for C++. So Hopefully you're able to join us for the skill sprints as well. And do please tell your friends and coworkers, et cetera, to uh, check out these skill sprints and webinars and check out the latest version, 10 Seattle, and all the great new features in there. Uh, thanks for your help, Stephen, and thanks everyone for joining us. Okay, cheers. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks.